I'm Michael Blowen. I'm here at Old Friends. Been here for quite some time. Uh, since uh, we're sequestered now and people can't come to the farm, we've decided to bring the farm to you. Uh, most of you have been here before, know Little Silver Charm here, and we have a, a lot of new horses here that you'll be able to get uh, introduced to, even if it's just on, on the video. I hope you'll like it, and I hope it'll also act as an inspiration for you to come to the farm once we're back open again and everybody's happy. And I got the carrots. You want to do our trick? Do you like it? Probably not. Huh? Help me every time he wins. And he wins every time. Huh. Right? Doesn't like to get petted. Do you? Get on the racetrack, but what he's done for us here at Old Friends. And as you know, we have some fabulous racehorses here. Grade one winners. Yep, we've had some Hall of Famers, including him. And um, he's just perfect in every way. He is really intelligent. It's like having Elvis here. He, he's got all these fans. Of course, it's everybody knows that he won the the Derby and the Preakness and got beat by his pal Touch Gold. I want to get a picture of them together one of these days. Um, we beat him in the Belmont, but then he went to Dubai and uh, won the Dubai World Cup. Bob said every horse he ever brought to Dubai lost 40 or 50 pounds on the trip, and he gained 30. That's how cool he is. Nothing, nothing bothers him. Right, buddy? He'll do anything for a carrot, as long as they're presented in the proper fashion. He's into presentation. And he's just my favorite horse. When I wake up every day, we live in that house right there, and when I wake up every day and he's in my backyard, I'm thinking, where else would you want to be? I don't, that's another reason I feel bad that we're sequestered here for everybody else because you don't get to experience it the way I do. And I, I really feel, uh, I really feel privileged to be able to do that. And he comes down the hill every day, get his carrots. It's like when I was a kid watching the Lone Ranger, being a Lone Ranger, when he and Silver go up the hill and he comes down the hill the same way. He's an extraordinary animal. He's a, a great friend. Diane's working on a, my wife, Diane, who we occasionally mention here. <laughs> Boys of her, I wouldn't be here, I'll tell you that much. But anyway, um, she's working on a book of stories of Silver Charm and how he affected people's lives. And the stories range from 
suicide prevention, to, to international commerce. One of the great things about Silver Charm that was lucky for him is that he was owned by Robert and Beverly Lewis, who were two of the kindest, nicest uh, owners in the history of thoroughbred horse racing. Uh, they also owned Charismatic, who was here for a while. And after uh, Silver Charm's uh, career was over as a racehorse, he went to Three Chimneys Farm, where he was a, an adequate but not a sensational breeder. And he wasn't that popular with a lot of the breeders. Uh, Robert Clay, I'm told, was uh, told, uh, told uh, Robert Clay, who owned Three Chimneys Farm, finally persuaded uh, the, the Lewises to sell him to Japan. They offered a lot of money, and, and, and Robert Clay said, quite rightly, that he might get some better mares over there, he might be better suited to their horses, you don't know, but it gives the horse a chance. Well, before he did it, Robert Lewis made a, signed an agreement up, uh, was the first real buyback of, uh, agreement with teeth, because not only did he did he arrange the provision that when his breeding career, when Silver Charm's breeding career was over, over in Japan, he'd be able to come home. And, and he put money with it. So 11 years later, <laughs> in one uh, cloudy October afternoon, I got a call from Sandy Hatfield over at Three Chimneys Farm. And she said, how would you like to have an old gray stallion at your farm? And I knew exactly who she was talking about. And I freaked out and I wasn't supposed to tell anybody. <laughs> I can't keep a secret for two seconds, but I did this one and uh, went to the other end of the farm and ran up and down and jumped and just like a kid at Christmas time, only better, and to uh, know that he was coming. And then when he finally arrived here, it was a cold, nasty December 1st, um, and uh, a whole bunch of his fans came on that really nasty day just to see him get off the trailer and come over here. And he's been here ever since. Uh, not only did Mr. Lewis and the, uh, Robert and Beverly Lewis trust for old Silver Charm uh, pay for his trip back in all expenses, and it's expensive, believe me, it costs us about $45,000 to bring Warrenlow home. Um, he also has a $10,000 annual endowment that Jeff Lewis, their son, uh, reminds me of every year when he sends the $10,000 check in to help Silver Charm. Now, so he'll probably not earn as much as he earned on the track, which was over six and a half million dollars, but uh, he certainly attracted a, a, a lot of attention and he certainly was the, mo per, the living thing most responsible for putting, uh, for putting old friends really on the map and helping us become self-sufficient. He's so sweet. Kind of an afterthought, but you know, people told me all the time you shouldn't have stallions, you shouldn't let people come and pet, uh, you know, feed them carrots and stuff, they'll get their hands bitten off and everything. But you know, once they learn to retire and just relax, um, they're totally different. They're not like they are in the breeding shed, they're not like they were at the racetrack. Frankly, I'm a lot nicer now that I'm retired from a real job, too. My job that paid me money, that job, um, I'm different, too. <laughs> And so are you, because you're so smart. You want to thank everybody? You want to thank everybody for taking the visual, virtual tour, huh? There's nothing like seeing it in person though, right? It's like watching races on TV or watching races in person. There's no comparison.